All right, so what did we get on the, uh, the 30, 60, 90? If, this, if 2x equals 1, x is a half, okay? So there we have a half. And that means that x times radical 3 is going to equal what? Yeah, root 3 over 2. Now, if you did that on a calculator, you're going to get 0.866 and so on. All right, but don't, don't bother writing that out with a calculator, okay? Now, the reason why we did that is because... Oops. There we go. It's just a reset. Because now we know the coordinates for this point. Okay? What would the x coordinate of this point be? This point right here. Um, 3 over root 3 over 2. Yeah, root 3 over 2. Okay? Because here's our 3 degree angle. This bottom side was root 3 over 2. Okay? What's the y coordinate then? 1 half. 1 half. Okay? Now, uh, for the 45, 45, 90, we're going to find use this to find the coordinates of this angle here at 45, or at pi over 4. Okay. So, if x times radical 2 is 1, then what's x? Radical, radical 2 over 2. 2. Oh, and you guys even rationalized the denominator. Very good. Okay, 1 divided by radical 2 is root 2 over 2. And of course, if that one is, then so is this one. Okay, so the coordinates here? Root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. Okay. Now, what about, what about, um, our 60 degree angle, we're at pi over 3. We just switched, just switched it from x to y coordinate. Which uh, one? 30. Uh, 30. From the 30. Yeah, doing it from that one wouldn't really do much. So, yeah, we switched the x and y coordinates from the 30 degree or the pi over 6 angle. We have 1 half and root 3 over 2. Okay? Those are our coordinates. So, anyone have any questions about how we got any of those points, first of all? All right, good. So you're probably asking yourself, all right, so where's all this trig that we're supposed to be learning? We haven't gotten to the trig yet. But here's where it's gonna, we're going to start tying it into this unit circle, okay? Let's take a closer look at the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And uh, how many of you have seen this abbreviation before, SOKATOA? How many of you have seen that before? All right, so some of you have not. This is a short way of helping you remember how the trig functions work in a right triangle. Okay? We have our three trig functions, which are sine, and if you wrote the word out, it would be sine, S-I-N-E, cosine, cosine, and tangent. Now, you've probably used these a little bit in another class, right? Has anyone not ever done anything with sine, cosine, or tangent? All right, so, so everyone has at least a little bit of experience with these. Okay, now... Sokatoa is helpful because if you understand what the O and the A stand for and the H, then it shows you how to set up the proportions or the set up the ratios. All right, we're going to look at the 30 degree angle. And as I look at this 30 degree angle, if I'm trying to find the sine of the 30 degree angle, this says to take the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
Well, opposite means like across from. So that's the side that's one half, opposite. So I'm going to put one half in the numerator. And then H stands for the hypotenuse. So that's obviously just one. So the sine of 30 degrees is one half. Now, if we want the cosine of 30, H still stands for the hypotenuse, so it's going to be over 1. But A stands for adjacent, A-D-J-A-C-E-N-T. Kind of a strange word, but it, re it means next to. All right, so we're looking for the side right next to our 30-degree angle, and that is the root 3 over 2. That's going to be our adjacent side. All right, so we have root 3 over 2 over 1, which is just root 3 over 2, okay? Now, if anyone notice anything, oh, stop there, before we get to tangent. We don't use the hypotenuse? Sine 30 degrees. Well, we do use the hypotenuse, it just equals 1. Right. Sine 30 degrees equals, equals to cosine 60 six degrees. Oh, that's actually true. The sine of 30 degrees would equal the cosine of 60 degrees. It's actually one of our co-function identities we'll look at later. Cosine of 30 equals the sine of 60. Yeah. yeah. Look at the actual values of sine and cosine. They ought to look familiar. They're the coordinates, all right? The sine of 30 is a half. That's the y coordinate, right? And cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. That's the x coordinate at that 30 degree angle. Okay? Does everyone see that? So those are our y and x. Now, let's look at tangent. The tangent of 30, what do you think, what does TOA stand for? Tangent equals? Opposite, opposite, over, opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be 1 half over root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 3. Yeah, that's going to be 1 over root 3 which is root 3 over 3. Oops. Too many. There we go. There's a 3. Okay, so that's root 3 over 3. Now, what do you notice about tangent? It is a number. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Look at it before we simplified it. It's the coordinates again. It involves those coordinates again. What's in the numerator? One. Huh? About the one half yeah, the one half. And one half is our y coordinate, which is also our x coordinate of sixty. Yeah, which is sine. Sine of 30, okay? And the root 3 over 2 is the cosine. cosine of 30, or the x. So it's y over x, which is sine over the cosine. Sine over cosine. And that's actually something we're going to use quite a bit later on. It's called a quotient identity. It's tangent equals sine over cosine. All right? Now, to kind of summarize this, now that we've seen it down here, notice sine and cosine are in the unit circle. All right? They're in the coordinates of each of the points on the unit circle. So your y coordinate is always going to be sine. Your, cos your x coordinate is always going to be the cosine. And then tangent is just going to be y over x.
Are there any questions about that part of it? So, but like, would it matter if you do sign of 30 or sign of 60 or sign of 90? Would it still be the Y? It's still going to be the Y coordinate, yes. Um, so that's where the unit circle is really helpful. The sine of 30 is a half. The sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. The sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Oh, okay. The sine of 90 is 1. Okay. The yeah. sine of 0 is 0. What? You erased. Oh, I erased a few. Oh. Never erase this one. I actually want it to. There we go. Thank you. Um, but yes, the y coordinate on the unit circle is always going to be the sine of that angle. Um, and the x coordinate would always be the cosine. So if I asked you for the cosine of pi over 3, you would tell me that's. Wait. You said it was on the bottom, wasn't it? Sine over cosine? No, of pi no, over 3. The angle is pi over, over 3. Two. Cosine of pi over 3. Look at our unit pi circle over. here. Oh, it's one half. It's one half, okay? It's going to be the x coordinate at pi over 3, right? Here's pi over 3. There's the one half, okay? Yes? Does that, uh, tr like, does that rule work for the other three quadrants? Yes. Um, let's try a couple more of these. What would the sine of pi over 2 be? One. One, okay. What's the cosine of pi over six? Root three oh. over two. Root three over two, all right. <coughs> What's the tangent of pi over four? One. Root two over two. One. Yeah, which is? Good, one, all right. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2 is just 1. Okay? What's the, uh, what's the tangent of 0? 0. What's the tangent of pi over 2? 1. No, 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 no. Undefined. It would be 1 over 0. Tangent of pi over 2 is actually undefined. And later on this year, we'll look at sketching these. There's actually an asymptote at pi over 2 on our tangent graph. Okay? So, but we'll get to that later. So you'll see sine and cosine and even the tangent. You have to do a little bit of work for tangent. But once you know your unit circle... You'll know all the sines and cosines of all those angles. And that's helpful because 30s, 60s, and 45s are used a lot. Um, when people design things, you know, the 45 degree angle provides great stability. Architects have found and engineers have found. So they use 45s all the time. Um, so, anyways. We've looked at the three main trig functions, but there are also three other trig functions known as the reciprocal functions. Does anyone know what those are? Secant. Secant's one? Some other term. There's two more. We had sine and cosine. So cosine. Cotangent. Cosecant, good. And what did you say? Cotangent. Cotangent. All right, there we go. Those are our six reciprocal functions. Now, you don't need to write down all, all six of these because they just say the same thing in two different ways. All right? We have cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. All right? Notice the abbreviation for cosecant is CSC. Cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other. All right, and you have the abbreviation SEC for secant. 
S E C S E C K. You know, like college football. Is that like overrated or maybe a little bit bigger? <laughs> Uh, then we have tangent and cotangent. They're also reciprocals of each other. Now, um, especially if you studied this in other countries, um, you may have learned tangent as TG. A couple people in another period had learned it as TG um, or CTG uh, for cotangent. Um, Trying to remember what they, what else they had, or was it TNG? Have you guys heard of that? Okay. Anyways, if you've learned a slightly different abbreviation, I don't want you just making up your own, okay? But if you've actually learned it a certain way and you're used to doing it that way, just let me know, and that's okay. Um, but these are the abbreviations I'll be using. Um, for cotangent, if you look at a really old book, you might see CTN in there. Um, I had a book when I was in high school, it was an old book. But we had two different books we used, and one used COT and one used CTN. So, um, but anyways, these are our six trig functions. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to look at how to, if we're given one value of a trig function, how do we find the other five? And it actually is a little simpler than you might seem. But to do this, we're going to look at a section from the homework. Uh, I gave you 9 through 15, the odds, in this section. So we're going to look at a couple of the evens. We're not going to do all four. But let's take a look at the directions and see how we would approach this problem. Um, it says, sketch a right triangle corresponding to the trigonometric function of the acute angle theta. All right? So here, each of these are in terms of theta. We'll go ahead and start with number 12. Um, but it says it's an acute angle. What does that mean? Less than, 90. Less than 90 degrees. In other words, we're in the first quadrant, too, right? So these are angles that we've dealt with. Um, it said, so let's sketch a uh, triangle. We're going to sketch a right triangle. I'm going to put theta in here. Now, if the cosine of theta is 3 over 7, if you remember Sokatoa, then 3 is the what side of the triangle? 3 is the opposite. Um, it's the adjacent. 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 So it's the side next to it, and seven would be the uh, hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to need to figure this side out. Two times. Um, before we do, real quick though, a couple people asked, well, how do we know those are actually three and seven? How do we know it's not six and 14? It doesn't matter. What? It doesn't matter. Excellent, excellent explanation, okay? It doesn't matter. It's a ratio, so we would reduce it, right? If it were 6 and 14, it would still reduce down to 3 sevenths. You know, if it were 30 and 70, it would still reduce down to 3 sevenths. All right, so you don't have to overthink that part of it. But how would we figure out this side right there? It just disappeared. There we go. Like x squared, x squared plus 3 squared equals 7 squared. Okay, good. We're using that Pythagorean theorem. If that's x, x squared plus 3 squared equals 7 squared. 2 times radical 2. All right, good. x squared plus 9 is 49. You subtract the 9s, and you get x squared equals 40. So that's what you have to square root, and then Edward is right, square root of 40 is 2 radical 10.
Does anyone have a question about how we got to root 10? All right. So now that we have that, we can then find sine of theta. We already know cosine of theta is 3 sevenths. Tangent of theta. And then also cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. So what's going to be the easiest one to find, actually? Secant. Secant, because what is it? It's one, it's over, one over cosine. Yeah, 1 over cosine, so that ends up being 7 over 3. 7 over 3. There we go. 7 over 3. So even if you couldn't remember how to find that third side, you could at least get 1 out of 5, right? Okay. Not that that's really good, but it's better than nothing. All right, so now what's sine? 2 root 10 over 7. 2 root 10 over 7. Opposite over hypotenuse. Two root ten over seven, uh, which means our cosine would equal what? Seven over two. Seven. Seven. Good. Seven over two root ten, which we would want to simplify, right? Yeah. Uh, Fourteen seven. times root ten over twenty. Hang on. Seven root ten over twenty. Over twenty. Yeah. There we go. Seven root ten over twenty. We're doing seven over 2 root 10, multiply by root 10 over root 10. That's where we get the 20 on the bottom, and 7 root 10 in the numerator. Okay. What are these useful for? What are these useful for? Um, well, anytime you want to solve a problem, that involves any kind of angles or distances or whatever, you're going to be using sine, cosine, tangent, or a combination of those. Um, the cosecant, secants, and cotangents aren't used quite as much, but particularly when we get um, into calculus, you get into derivatives and integrals, and they show up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so the more advanced applications and things you'll run into those. All right, uh, so then what's tangent? Sine over cosine. Sine over cosine or? 2 root 10 over 3. Yeah, 2 root 10 over 3. Hmm? Two root 10 over 3. There we go. That's the second show up. 2 root 10 over 3. And then cotangent would be? Uh, All right, and that's it. Okay. Now, part of this is just a practice of getting used to dealing with the reciprocal functions and whatnot. If we were solving a problem, we probably wouldn't need all six of them, but um, at least we know we can find it if we want. All right, take a couple minutes here, and let's do, oh, uh, let's do 14. The cosecant of theta is 17 fourths, okay? So, go ahead, you can scoot next to the person next to you and, and work together on this to, to figure some of these out, all right? But the cosecant is 17 fourths. Find that third side of the triangle and then find the other five trig functions. I'll give you a couple minutes here to work on it and then see how well you do with it.
like co-secant. Co-secant, which is the reciprocal of sine. a setting in there somewhere that you can change it to where it'll give you simplified to form as opposed to I'm sorry what? Oh that's what I'm not sure about. I have to yeah search on my country can find me the same way. Um, <laughs> Are we supposed to leave that at this? You can do that, yeah. Because that won't simplify. That won't simplify because, like, 273 is divisible by 3, but then it's 91, which is prime. So you can't simplify it. All right, at this point, we should have at least gotten that third side, right? Yeah. We know how to use the Pythagorean theorem. Hope so. Um, yeah, hopefully. So now, the cosecant was 17 fourths, so that automatically tells us something is 4 seventeenths, right? What's that? What's 4 seventeenths? Sine. Sine. Okay, sine of theta is going to be 4 seventeenths. So now, now that we have this side here, we can also find the cosine. What's that going to be? Yeah, root 273 over 17. Okay. And then we have secant. 17 over root 273, so it would be... 17 over 273 over 273. There we go. And then we have 
Yeah, yeah, four over root two seventy three, so it's four over two seventy three over two seventy three. Yeah. For tangent? For tangent, yes. And then cut is Wait, I have a question. Um for tangent, I got four over oh, okay, then you have to switch the degree. Yeah. yeah right. All right. Any other questions? All right, good. Excuse the interruption. This is an announcement that all residential prefix should report to room 111 right after school. Thank you. Um, so moving forward here, I gave you a number of practice things to try. Some of these are not all in the first quadrant. So think about that. These are actually all unit circles. Okay? These are unit circles, so the radius is 1. Um, Can you go up a little, please? Yeah. But uh, try a couple of those. See how the sine and cosine and tangent act in other quadrants. Okay, um, there's a little bit of application as well that you can try. They're relatively simple applications. They're easier than they might look initially. Uh, here's the, the rest of the ones that we just did. Okay, but uh, take a look at those. And actually, I'm going to give you the last 12 minutes here. I don't want you just sitting around and talking. But I want you to take some time. You could work on the board. A group could even work on the smart board if they want. Um, but I want you to get a head start on this and, and practice a little bit. Okay? All right. So.